Go for it. All right, um, Mr. Odell with Warren Tech North. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to stencil and create some interesting designs that you can use on all sorts of different objects. Um, you'll be using this stencil to um, create a, a piece that's on your sketchbook as well as using that same stencil um, on a t-shirt that you guys will actually get to wear as well. Uh, I'm going to show you this quick and easy thing of how to create a stencil. So, um, first off, you have to have a design. And I'm going to create a nice simple design too so you guys can kind of see what we need to do. Um, my design that I might have sketched out um, Hey, there you go. There's my design. Now I want to create a stencil out of this, but I need to think about what I'm going to do when I cut these pieces out. So when you cut things out, you have to think about if I cut out this entire shape out of here, this center shape would go away. So I need to think of a way of changing my design to make that center piece stay there. A lot of ways to help with that is building connecting pieces that would connect to keep that in place. Depending on what your design is and how complicated it is, you'll want to have more of those connecting pieces. Nothing is worse than if cutting something out and then you have to figure out how to make that overlay. So once you guys have your final design that you've sketched in your sketchbook or drawn from reference or something like that, you'll have a piece of transparency paper. The reason why we use transparency paper is one, it's easy to transfer our design onto. Also this transparency paper makes it really easy to use when we're spray painting over and over again. A piece of paper that if we spray paint it once works, but trying to peel that off and use it again will end up falling apart. So we'll use this. Now if I have my transparency that's on there, I can tape that in place if I need to, if I'm using that over and over again, especially if I want to do this multiple times just by taking that tape and taping it in place will help out with that too. Now what I need to do is just take my Sharpie marker, create those lines that I want to create. I'm going to keep this area that's here. Okay. I have that done. I'll peel it off. See, I have my final stencil that's made. From that final stencil, then I'll have to take a exacto knife that's over here and cut that out. I'll put this nice exacto knife. Remember what we talked about with exacto knives: the sharper, the better. If you need to change the blade, change the blade. Taking this off, putting it in the jar where it should be. Don't throw that in the trash. Cutting this out, guys. Remember that you're going to do a nice even space. Turning your paper, not trying to turn the blade, works much easier. Just cut up individual pieces. Okay. 
I'm going to save these pieces because I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. And there's our stencil that we can use too. I'll finish cutting this out. pieces. For those of you that already did the positive and negative space piece, cutting out your paper, this should be very easy for you. And there's my final stencil. You can see how that fits in with my exact piece. So what that does is that creates a nice piece that we can use to create that stencil. So we're going to use these other little pieces too, and we're going to sh I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. And we're going to take these in the other room. And I'm going to show you how another stencil works as well. With this one too, you can see how complicated you can get, but remember that you're trying to keep all those little connecting pieces together, and you can get fairly complicated with your stencil. So once you're done with your stencil, you want to grab your sketchbook on ground bond. Sketchbook. Um, you'll eventually be doing it on the front or on the back, either one, but I'm going to show you guys we're going to do this stencil on the back here. So we'll take our sketchbook I'm going to take my stencil, I'm going to take this one too, so I can show you guys a good example of how to make this one work as well. Okay, so now with your sketchbook, you want to make sure that you kind of mask off those areas that you don't want to get paint on. An easy way to do that is just to take a nice scrap piece of paper, put that underneath there. Hey, there you go, when I spray this, it's not going to spray all of this as well. You might want to tape up your spine though, just by taking some masking tape and putting some tape over that too. That will mask off those areas so that you won't get paint where you don't want to. Okay. So the other thing now that you have to do is you need to set up your stencil. Okay. I know that I want my pieces that are here, but I need to make sure that it stays in place. What happens a lot when I just place a stencil down if it's just set on there, when I'm spraying the paint on there, it might blow up these little extra pieces that I don't want to. So a way to fix that is just to do a light coating of spray glue, and I'm going to repeat, very light. Don't really stick it on there because then it's going to be really hard to get off. Okay. So all you need to do is, we're going to do this inside, if you're at Central you'll have to do the spraying outside. We can spray in here, we have our spray glue, and we have a place to spray it. All I'm going to do is spray the back side of my stencil, but do a very light spray. Okay? So it's not so sticky. And that simple spray, I'm going to kind of let this dry a little bit before I stick it down. That simple spray is going to help with creating my stencil on there. Okay? I'm going to show you something else too. I actually saved these pieces that I had, and I'm actually going to spray the back of these individual pieces as well because we're going to use them on here. Making sure that I'm doing the back of them. I'm actually going to use these with our with what I'm creating as well. Okay, actually works out pretty cool. 
So I can do one of two things. I can either do a positive or, or a negative of my stencil that's here. I'm going to lay this down first. Okay, and notice that that is on there. Okay, that's where my first stencil might need to be. It's sticking on there. It's not going to be totally stick, stuck. Um, but I'm also going to use these other pieces too because I want to create um, some other unique ways of doing this. So I can create these other pieces and overlay them to kind of create a 3D effect that's here. You can kind of see where that starts to happen here. And I'm going to peel these off and use these. It's a nice 3D effect. I'm going to spray this, you'll see. But, see this little edge that's here? I want to take my tape, cover that up too. Now I can take this outside, but I also need something to spray this on. So, because I don't want to do this, take something to spray it on so I don't make a mess outside. So there's that, there's my stencil. I'm gonna put my spray glue and my tape back. I'm done. Tape. And all the paint that you guys want to use are in here. There's a lot multiple colors depending on what you guys want to use. All sorts of different things, different colors. You can get some really interesting things going on here. I'm going to take a few different colors that might be out there that I can use. I'm going to take this with us. So a lot of times I'll just put those on the box that's there. Um, I can use the actual spray box if I want to, but we're going to go outside now, okay? Okay, now we're outside. Notice I'm on the grass. I'm not on the sidewalk. I'm not on the rocks. Um, I'm someplace that's not going to create a mess, okay? The only reason that we can keep doing this is because we haven't made a mess yet. As soon as someone makes a mess, hey, this project might end, okay? So guys, I'm going to go ahead and spray paint this, making sure if I'm away from the wind, if the wind's blowing this direction, I'm not standing in the middle of the wind and it's going to blow right back on me. So if the wind's blowing this direction, I'm going to stand over here so I can spray away from me. Okay? Shake this up. Suits have problems with the caps. All you got to do is grab it. It comes right off. Okay? Just like we did with spray glue, as you guys are spray painting, remember where the nozzle is, so you're not spraying yourself in the face, okay? You should be about a foot away, okay? Remember that spray paint only works either upright or at a 45 degree angle. If you start going too far, you're gonna end up with splatters and it's not going to work, okay? Nice even strokes as you're doing this. comes the hard part. You have to wait. You have to wait for this, the paint to dry before you add on your other colors. Okay, you can go in there inside, you can put it under the, uh, the hair dryer, you can put it under the fan, but you got to make sure that it's dry first before you do your next colors. Okay. Also helps without creating a mess. Now, I don't have any gloves on, so if you don't wait, you're going to end up with paint all over your hands too. So be aware of that as well, okay? So we're gonna wait a few minutes for this dry and we're gonna come right back. Okay, 
Okay, so we did our first color. We're going to take it off and kind of see what was left. Anything neat? I'm going to do something a little different so I can get this other color that's here. I'm going to kind of offset this just a little bit. See if this works. Might not be a perfect science, but hey, that's kind of the fun thing about stenciling. Okay, I'll lay this back down. Do my next color. It's going to be pink. See what happens with different colors on that black. Different colors work differently. Some are better than others. So by creating your stencils, you can do multiple different things in different ways. Um, you can also create different things with these different pieces if you want. Um, another interesting thing that you guys can do with these, with these things when you're done, by creating a positive or a negative, you can take these pieces and overlay again, making sure to wait for this to dry. multiple colors. Then when you're done, you get some really unique and interesting things.